Welcome to the Auto Know Better podcast, episode 20. I'm Smarty and I'm joined tonight by Jay and Gilly. And Hello. tonight making his main podcast debut, Mr. Simon Johnson. How are we doing, boys? Not too bad, boys. Not too bad. We're good. Not bad. Has uh, everyone been up? Well, uh, enjoying Mr. Southgate's football over the past few <laughs> days and weeks. Bring back Bielsa Ball. Bring back Bielsa Ball, lads. Eh? <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so, talking about Mr. Southgate, what do we think to uh, our England performances over the well, the last two, obviously, yeah, Albania and San Marino? I'd say um, what we'd expect. Nothing spectacular, really. All, all solid and as they should be. So boring. Um, boring. Well, yeah, <laughs> boring. 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 boring question, boring answers. <laughs> all, 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 all That's all I've got for you, Smarty. <laughs> That's good enough you know, for me, mate. It, it, I, I won't be guilty to step in, but it's just left a gap up. there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it might have been Mez that, that was saying it was uh, on the um, on the conversation with, with LUC Stats um, about what Lineker had said about the... Um, the lower ranked teams should play off against each other to then earn the right to be in the qualifiers yeah. instead of bringing all the lower ranked teams in because playing these side, playing a side like San Marino does nothing for them and it does nothing for England. It's a nothing game. It's it, you know it, the, the the do better having a, an intense training session. They're not yeah. no, nobody gains and and you know the, the 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 when you get when you come right down to it getting tonked off sides that are looking to hope to do well. I, you know, I've, I've no confidence in Southgate doing well, but <laughs> you know, we, we, we hope that we're going to be doing well in, in, a, in a tournament. San Marino hope to score a goal in qualifiers. They don't hope to even get to the That's tournament. It. Oh. It's, it's completely a different world. And, you know, it's, it's one of those where um, there's just so little value associated with those games. It puts people off watching. Um, the players try to get up for a game and then it's it's nothing. And you can see it in the way that they play. Yeah. Those San Marino players are basically just like us. They just turn up for a game and then they go back to being mechanics, milkmen, yeah. postmen, whatever, the next day. And it's just, you know what I mean? It's just like us having to play international football. We'd get trounced as well. And then you just go back to your job. I mean, it's really yeah. cool for them to do that. Was but it must be. Oh, man, I'd, I'd drink half a milk, to be fair. That's it. You'd be nicking people's <laughs> orange, you that kind of guy. <laughs> That's it. Do you know what? I once, um, in my younger days, when I was even more crazy than I am now, um, I ended up out in Wakey on Westgate. Um, oh, you Stax crazy Alice bastard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, That's a little highlight. I ended, up sort of, I ended up stranded there on my own, and I lived in Huddersfield at the time. And I, Do you know what? I thought, fuck it, I'm going to walk home. It took me four and a half hours I walked up past National Mining Museum on Unlit Road, and by the time I got back to Huddersfield, I was fucked. I saw a pint of milk and an orange juice on someone's step, and I fucking had them. <laughs> they were gone. <laughs> that right, person's the watching, I'm very sorry. Audible, <laughs> audible, thief. I, I was struggling. I think I slept on. the entire next day. I was fucked. <laughs> I, I never tried that again. Simon? Yeah, I... I, I Sort of agree what Gilly says to be fair because it's I, I, I think for a start that I'm not a massive fan of Southgate but um I think those sort of games it's lose lose because you, you know you're going to win the game so it's more it's more of how you perform and I think it's very difficult to gauge what what level your players are performing at against team teams like San Marino um. So yeah, it's it's a difficult one, but the, I mean, I weren't blown away by by the Albania performance, to be honest. Um, I just, do you know what it is? I mean, I was I, I I always grew up and I loved watching exciting players, and I look at the England team now, and I just don't I don't see any skill. I don't see anybody try to beat players and and be a little bit different. It's all it's all a bit repetitive and and, and boring, if you like. A bit safe, you know. Yeah, very safe. Very yeah. safe. Yeah, I'm of I'm of a very um, similar opinion to you. To be honest, to me, I mean, like Gilly was saying, you know, beating teams like like San Marino and and stuff like that. I mean, come on, we don't need to be fielding our best best team. Look, players like Harry Kane and, and all that sort of stuff. You should be fielding people. Like, I mean, Bamford's, your, your Ollie Watkins, to try and blood your, your new players to see if they're actually any good in, at this you know kind of level. If we can't beat a bloody a San Marino side with players like Bamford and all the kind of maybe the fringe players for the England setup, 
then we really, really shouldn't be going anywhere near a World Cup, should we? Let's be honest. But in that case, then it might as well be a reserve game. Oh, well, exactly, but why, it's not why a wouldn't you game, use it? Is it? It's a default game, but isn't it? That yeah. said, Just if they didn't perform, then we're not going to a World Cup. So it, it's, it's kind of a, you know, you're kind of stuck, aren't you? Watching boring football with your best players. Yeah, I mean, what you know, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not just our football. Um, just, just the last point. I, I think I saw um, the, the uh, Australasia qualifying detail, and I, and I think I can't remember who it was. Um, it might have been Western Samoa and, and, and Tonga and, and a couple of others in Australia, and I think Australia's goal difference was sixty-six to none. Really? <laughs> What's the point? Does he just play like Fiji and Tonga and all that? Yeah. What is what is Crazy, what is the it? point that that you know and and uh, it's, uh yeah it's just it's frustrating to me but yeah you know, equally at the same time when when we're talking about it's difficult you know coming back to your point Simon about um the the, the skill level being a bit lacking is a lot of that's not down to the players it goes back to what we're saying about the Wales game. Yeah, you know, we played three centre backs, two wing backs, and, and a double pivot in midfield in in, in defensive centre mid, and it's, it's like negative what, football. What do, you, what do you expect we're going to do? Yeah. And that was against Wales that didn't even have Bale in the team. You yeah. know, the, their their best player were, were, were our fourth choice attacker at the time, and it, it's like do you know. Do you know what, Gilly? I've been thinking about that. You know, and it, excuse me, friends, it pisses me off a little bit because I think. I think automatically you're losing the psychological battle for a start because I think when you set up like that, you're telling opposition that, okay, we expect you to be better than us. We expect you to uh, be, be have more possession. We expect you to create more chances. So this is because that's, that's a normal line of thinking when you expect opposition to be better than you. But we against Albania, really, or, or do you know what I mean? I'm not saying we set up like a, a, as defensive, but it's just I just I can't fathom it. It just makes no sense to me. No, no logic there at all. Frustrated. I genuinely, I genuinely think that sometimes he does stuff like that because he just wants to look like he's like a, a forward-thinking manager and he's got these ideas. And because other people don't really play that way, do they? So. He's like, yeah, so we're going to try this and then, you know, it'll be, it'll be different and it'll look like I've got these fresh ideas and I'm this exciting young coach. And he, it's anything but. We look, yeah. like, we look like a bloody shadow of chuffing Jap Stam's ready. All <laughs> possession base, just pass it around back, passing it forward maybe to winger and then back to defence. And I remember beating them 2-0 at home and we absolutely, I think we must have had about 25, 30% of football. And we dicked them 2-0 because whatever yeah. sniff we had, we, we threw everything at them and we, and we beat them. That's you know, Paul Goldberg, Gary Monk, no, football. Well, fucking hell, it's so negative, isn't it? It's such a fucking boring watch, like. Yeah. But then yeah. you get, you know, the only reason I'm watching it is for is for Calvin Phillips, and I'm yeah. I'm going to be totally honest because I have no interest at all in anything else but watching Calvin Phillips and maybe a couple of the you know the players like dare I say Grealish and other players that have made the way from the Championship into that England setup mm. that I find oh, I know I will know what these guys are all about. I know what Harry Kane can do. I don't give a fuck about Harry Kane. Yeah, it's interesting stuff like that. But with, with that like, said about Phillips, you know, I would, I would reckon he's he's play, I mean, he was played out of position, completely out of position against Albania. It was really strange. It yeah, was yeah, very, I, I very odd one. That far forward. I still find it strange when I see a picture of him in an England shirt and I'm like, I can't yeah. believe it. You know what I mean? He's made it. He's got Especially with number eight on his back. He's made his oh, dream yeah, and got where he wanted oh. to be. <laughs> I don't think it's awesome, me. He's fucking mint, isn't it? Seeing one of your, one of your lads playing for England again. Mm-hmm. It's great. Did his nan get to see him play for England or had she gone before he played? No, I think that oh, was his she, fifth yeah, calf. I think, his... I think she oh, saw him good, a couple okay. of times. Yeah, she saw him when he was first then. called up. He was injured for the second, um, second bout once, yeah. And then, uh, mm. and obviously, she passed away, unfortunately, in uh, in February. Was it February yeah. or March? I, one, one I find it hard to remember dates of like, games and stuff. So no, I'm glad that she got to see him play. That's nice. Were you? Did you play with Smithy when he were uh, part of England set up, Simon? Um, was he with, I think he might have been with the 21s at that point, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I can't recall when uh, when he got his senior call up, to be fair. Are you guys having him? I think we're 2004 ish. No, no. three ish, maybe two. When, maybe when he went into like England, that. you mean? Yeah, I'm sure it was. 
It won't okay. before. It won't long before. Well, yeah, exactly. Fuck him. Is it? Is it well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what, what do people think about Calvin's performances? How do you think he's played? You know, in, in a completely different kind of setup to what he's used to. I've not watched loads of it, as I said before we started. So I mean, I've caught bits of the games, and he's looked pretty solid to me. I, I remember when he first got picked for England, and he didn't look that good because he got put in a weird position, weird system. It's totally different to what he plays at Leeds. I think he's settled into it a bit more now and he's, he's got mm. to know some of the lads he's playing with a bit and stuff. And I think that's helped. Um, I don't think he's done anything wrong. I don't think you can fault him. Um, I don't think it's been spectacular. But then, as I say, I don't think the way he's being used is right. So I think he's doing probably the best he could in the situation. Mm. I think it, as well as that, yeah. So you're right. He's, he's, I have watched him all. He's been pretty solid. Um, he's, he's, you know, a lot of it has he's been deeper against um, uh, San Marino. He, he played he played quite deep, and and they weren't really attacking, so it was really difficult to kind of gauge. Uh, he didn't do it's anything wrong. It if there's it, no one there. Yeah, and he didn't do anything wrong. He held his position, and and uh, you know that allowed a platform for the rest of the team to go and do what they needed to do, and they knew that he was there as that anchor, and that was good. Um, but other than that. You know, they, they weren't pressing, they weren't coming on to us, they weren't chasing the ball down. And as a CDM, it's kind of difficult to show what you can do in, in the face of yeah. nothing. <laughs> it just um, leaves you a bit redundant, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, his passing was a bit more what we've come to expect. I think in the first couple of games, um, it were it, you know, it, it, it wasn't quite at the level that we expect from him. Um, some of the passes went astray, but, but you know, he would he were knocking it to the wings and he were finding feet, he, he, he would he were picking out a man 60 70 yard balls like we expect, like he does game in, game out yeah. for Leeds. And and yeah. he, it might have just been, you know, that like I said, um, this weekend was on his fifth cap. <laughs> mm. it, it, we're, we're expecting a lot of him to come into an England game wearing that shirt and, and with eight on his back and expect him to to kind of deliver the same level of performance that he does in a, in a side that's effectively kind of been built around him. I mean, yeah, it hasn't really, but, you know, Bielsa said to him, I'm going to make you the best player in the championship, and he did. Mm. And, he did, you know, yeah. we, we play to his strengths because his strengths really work for us. Now, he's gone into a different context now, and it's about mm. how he reacts to that. So it's going to take a little bit of growing into. And he's also yeah, playing definitely. for Gareth Southgate and not Bielsa. I mean, come on. <laughs> But it's like he knows where Jack Harrison's going to be when he pings a ball. You've yeah. got to learn that when you play with someone else like Sterling or Sancho or whoever else, uh, whoever else yeah. is playing. You know, you, you don't just have that, you've got to learn that. You've got to get used to the guys you're playing with, haven't you? Yeah, gotcha. yeah I've, 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 I've seen a few ne- negative, negative tweets about his performance, and I just I was sort of along the same uh, lines of Gilly again, like he's, he's new into that environment. So it's going to take him time to, to adjust to that. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's going to be the difficult West because of, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 international football is totally, it's a total different ball game to your, your domestic level. Um, so it just needs a bit of time. And I, I think, I think um, personally, and this isn't me being biased, I think, if he's going to play with two two sitting midfielders, that uh, Henderson and Phillips have to be that pairing. Um, I just don't yeah. see I don't see Declan Rice as that guy, and I think Gilly's got a few stats there to 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 sort of back <laughs> that up. I think, yeah. It was a graphic that was shared. Um, I, I think it were it, it were uh, MLT data or something like that, LUFC data that, that had um, shared it on Twitter, and, and it, it just showed the, the cut over point after Calvin had gone off. So what, what we had against Albania was uh, about 70 minutes of constant England pressure. And it was every single five minute chunk was in our favor. He went off and there were one in our favor after the point at which he'd gone off. And I think nine out of 10 were in Albania's and it just really showed really, really clearly it can't be in five minute chunks because that's, that's not enough. Uh, it might've been two minutes or something, but it just really showed in a, in a really clear graphic that I'll share on this and I'll overlay so that people can see it that actually that really impacted our stance in the game and the position of the game. And as, as I said in, in the warm-up, the, the chat that we were having, we were in a position where um, other things changed. It wasn't just a like-for-like swap. So other things did change and that has to be taken into account. But Calvin was missed after being taken off. 
regardless mm. of whether it was somebody being in that position or it was him being in that position, it was definitely missed after being taken off. Now, some of that talks about Southgate's capability and the, the changes he makes, and some of that talks about Phillips's capability and the fact that that was lacking in, in that last 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. I thought he had pretty, pretty good performances in both games. I certainly think it were... Um... His skill set were better portrayed against uh, San Marino, though, in that natural, like, kind of deep line role, which he's obviously, you know, made his own at Leeds. Um, and then Albania, kind of defending really high, kind of like a high press, but not like an attacking high press. It was kind of like a defensive high press. It was it were weird. It was like, what the fucking hell is he doing here? Um, having Calvin Phillips tackling people, you know, on the edge of their 18-yard box sort of thing, it was just, it was, it was a bit odd. Very but, um, but no, th- thanks for that, guys. Um, this week we don't have a poll because um, I thought we I would take the opportunity to speak to you guys on a more of a personal level. So I want you right, to, okay. one by one, don't matter who wants to go. So fact, go on, Jay, I've nominated you. You can go first. I want you nice. to tell me about um, a footballing memory. It can be any kind of footballing memory, um, an experience or just, you know, it might, whatever, um, from any point in your life that sticks out for you. Special. Um, okay, I, I mean, I, I was saying to you guys before the pod, I had sort of two options here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the most controversial one, um, which is when I went down to Ellen Road for the the open top bus celebration. Um, and yeah, I know I shouldn't have done it, and I know, I know, but I missed the first one when everyone on the Ottawa Know Better podcast. I missed the first one when when I didn't go down, and then. Do you know what? I, 16 years out of the Premier League, I, I couldn't, I know I shouldn't, but I couldn't take any more. I was like, a, I was like a kid at Christmas trying to sneak, you know, peek at the presents and just like pull a bit of wrapping <laughs> back. I'm like, no, I've, I've got to know. So I, I were off, I went down there and um, it, it was just absolutely amazing. It's something I'll never, ever forget. Um, I mean, I, I, just, I don't, I don't know how to put it all into words. It was just the way it felt, the euphoria, the, it was just, relief and just your happiness and joy and everybody there on the same page and it, it were like the best of Leeds and Leeds fans do you know what I mean and um, there were all kinds of funny stuff as well like somebody set a flare off and a bit of it melted this guy's shirt and he went absolutely ballistic <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but everybody soon calmed down it, it were all good natured otherwise and it, it, just seeing the guys up there, Victor Otto going berserk, see what it meant to him as well, and yeah. um, seeing Calvin lift the, the trophy up there, it was just, it were amazing. It, I'll well, never forget it. You down on any BMWs, were you? I wasn't, mate, no. I mean, <laughs> they'd have been a bit flatter if I jumped up and down. Them, so. <laughs> no, you know I wasn't involved. That was other night, the one that I didn't go to, luckily. So oh, yeah, of course. That in light of that, I am glad I missed that, to be fair, but... Um, yeah, it were amazing. I'll, I'll never forget it. It were it one of them sort of memories I'll keep with me for the rest of my life. And yeah, well happy, enjoyed. Yeah, it. the one with BMW it. was the one that, that where the yeah. the recording afterwards and they were all watching it in. in uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. When they were watching down, the, the Spiel, um, the Spiel West Brom, West Brom. Yeah, yeah. when they yeah. fucked it well and truly. Oh, class. Yeah, that's right. That the uh, the uh, Arsenal player can't remember his name. His name's gone. Um, I've never celebrated a town goal like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> never I bet they were gutted, like they wanted to win, but they didn't want to help us. So it'll have been really hard. Hey, we've been there, and funnily enough, that was against Arsenal when we had the scump title, but we needed to win yeah. to stay up. I remember that. Yeah. That, that were hard to take, that wasn't it? But, you well. know, needs must. Gilly, um, I'm going to come to you next. Yeah, so um, it, like I mentioned, the, um, actually this was a question. So I'm, 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 I'm prepared. So when it comes down to not personally playing, you know, there's a lot of good memories. I, I would all, all the Champions League nights at Ellen Road, and they were just magic. They were absolutely magic. Um, and when Dida spooned the ball in, into goal, and and uh, yeah. it were right at the death of the game, you know, it, it was euphoria like like you won't believe it. And then there was the Preston playoff game and the atmosphere at that one, and and it was just electric. Oh, I went to that. It was amazing. That was the one that where Billy fantastic. Davis had put job done up. He put job yeah. done up on on, yeah. on wall, and, just, and, and oh. then we beat him. Um, but I, but it, it, it's a personal memory, actually. So um, it was my birthday, um, and we were we, uh, there were there were loads and loads of lads coming out uh, on on night out. But we were playing football. We were, I, I was playing in Murfield for Murfield Old Bank working men. It's a big night, fiftieth. <laughs> Cheers. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, sorry. 
<laughs> so, actually, I, I was winding my ex-girlfriend up, and I shaved a Mr. T haircut. Oh. And, and, and she said, you are not going out of the house looking like that. So, of course, I did, because <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. <laughs> so, I went to football with it, because I'd done it before football. So, I went to football with it. I scored from inside my own half and ran around screaming, get some nuts, and I just lost my head completely. <laughs> Uh, and then we went out around town and it was ace. It was, it was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, God. No one puts Gilly in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. I wasn't going to go out. I was, was going to finish shaving it off, but she told me that I wasn't allowed to go out like that. So, of course, that's exactly yeah. what I did. Yeah. You're such an awkward bastard, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> so spiteful. Just won't be told, will it? Simon. <laughs> What is, is it um, as a fan or as a player anything, or what? Mate. Absolutely Whatever. anything. Because obviously you're the only player of us all, really. Let's be honest. Um, oh. us, us amateurs, and you're the only professional. So it can be anything from your like that you've experienced as a player or as a fan or you know whatever. Yeah, I'll give a quick one about playing days. Then, so um, under under sixteens, and at this point, I was I'd, I'd forced my forced my way into the England youth setup, up um, which, which I was obviously over the moon by. Um, and there was a tournament coming up and it was touch and go because I've been on standby a few times and I've been involved. Um, but there was a big tour. Well, only three teams. It was England, Argentina and France. And uh, as, as I said, it was touch and go whether I'd be called up. So I got called up anyway. And uh, I was on the bench against France and... I come on and, and, and done quite well. Uh, when I come on, I think we scored. Do you remember a lad called Michael Chopra? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember yes. Chops, yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah. They played for Newcastle, uh, didn't they? Newcastle, yeah. Uh, so I come on for the last 20 and done quite well. And uh, after the game, we won that game. Uh, the next game's against Argentina at Wembley. And I'm thinking to myself, fucking hell, I've done all right, man. I've got a chance of playing. So, yeah, gets to teams, team, team announcement time and fucking there, itchy feet, itchy feet, come on, just that. Um, uh, and before I know it, fucking my, my name and number gets read out and I'm fucking over the moon. Absolutely buzzing my tits off now. Nice. Um, we start off and a bit cagey, I'm a bit nervous. Um, and I think we, we go 1 0 up and I, I can't remember who scored. Um, and I'm doing okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm content. And uh, for some fucking reason, don't ask me why, because I'm all, I've always been an attack-minded player. On our uh, attacking set pieces, the gaffers fucking put me at the back. You know, you get you, you normally have two players. Yeah, uh, yeah stay, who back. stay back. Yeah. He's put me there. And, and before before the game, when he's given this information, I'm thinking that's a fucking mistake. That is, you, oh, I don't know what you're doing. But obviously, I'm like, yeah, no problem. So fucking, we've had a corner. We trod, 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 trod back to the to the halfway line. Do me bit for the team. Get countered, and a ball gets played. No, sorry, we get countered, but someone wins it back and plays it back to me. So it's running back. I let it run because I'm just going to play it back to the keeper, nice and easy, and get back into my position. I go to play it to the, the keeper. And I've just fucking totally gone over the ball. I fell over and I'm fucking name, I'm name dropping here as well. I fell over the ball and Tevez just runs straight through, straight <laughs> through on goal way. Last thing you straight. want to see. <laughs> Unbelievable. I've got <laughs> up, I've got up and I've sprinted. My teeth are fucking everywhere because my gnashes ain't the best. And I've managed to, to get some sort of contact and he's fluffed it. So I'm thinking, fucking hell, you, well done, well done. Uh, come on, get back on your game. Ten seconds later. Go on, <laughs> off, 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 off you come. Oh, no. <laughs> We're still enough with that. So, oh, yeah, because that was... he put you back on set pieces. Oh, because the track <laughs> put me back on set pieces. But, no, that's, do you know what? It's, it's a bit sweet. It's a fun memory. And, uh, but at the same time, I see the funny side of it now. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's one of them things, and it's like it's amazing to have been there and done it and played and all that. But 
so frustrating at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never watched it back. Don't want to see that. <laughs> Let's see if we can dig that one out on YouTube. <laughs> I guess you don't say anything when you're a kid at kid level, do you? You don't question the coaches and stuff. No, no, no. Always a little shit out at that point anyway. So, uh... <laughs> think, think we in this room, to be fair. <laughs> See how he handles defensive work. Come on, then, Smarty, you don't get away with it. Come on, let's have a memory. Um, Two right. Me- I've got quite a few, but it's probably a little bit cliche because it's quite recent. But the Stoke game at home for us when when Bielsa took charge, right? This it would just from what we'd been watching previous years from Eckingbottom, it were all right under Christian Cern, but Chris Evans, uh, Chris Evans, Steve Chris Evans. Evans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a difference in body between Steve and Chris Evans. <laughs> oh, they're both ginger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, Gary Monk, it were better, but before that, the dross and all that sort of stuff, you know, we're going back to fucking Eckingbottom and stuff. Uh, but when 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 Bielsa came and, and took over and we started playing that way we did against Stoke, it was just I was just in awe and I just could not stop smiling. I, I was just so happy because genuinely for the first time in such a long time I thought we actually might we actually might do something here. I mean I know it's first game of the season and you know everyone starts out at blocks and all that sort of stuff, but it just felt different. Everything felt different. There was a genuine buzz around the club, and for me. The turning point that then is, it's just obviously maps, you know, the success that we've obviously embarked on since. But what, 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 you know, I, I, that and maybe the Pablo Hernandez goal against Swansea. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I went on a beach in North Wales watching this as our holiday because, you know, responsible adults staying away from Melland Road and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I fucking Pablo scored that goal, and I just went absolutely off my tits. Run, it, this big fucking packed as well, and I was fucking running around screaming like fucking get it, get building sandcastle, them all over, you know, doing cartwheels and shit. Fuck your sandcastle, and Pablo just fucking edged it. But yeah, well, you know, just just now living, living now, being in the Premier League with Leeds United, back in the back where we belong. That's can that's, I? Can I ask you a question on that? Because um, obviously I've always followed the club. Um, but when Bielsa first went in, I wasn't, I weren't able to watch the games or do you know what I mean? I'll just look out for the results more than, more than anything. Was it really apparent from, because he was that the first game of the season against Stoke? Yeah, you say? Well, yeah. yeah. Was it really, was oh, it really man. apparent what he was, what yeah. he was going to be able to do with the group of players? Yeah. Right from the start, it, it well, was not, night and no, day. I, I, I think not, was, not yeah. before, not before. No, 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 no. Just, on, on when you saw that game, from that game, from that the, game, the yeah. difference, the difference in the Stoke game against what had gone before was unreal. It, it was, it was, it, really? the, I remember unreal. the conversations that we were having at the time. Is he's only had five weeks with these players? How the hell has he done that? Because it was. I thought they'd all. I thought they'd all been keying up in changing room before they came out. <laughs> oh, what the fucking all they got all this energy for? <laughs> so you, 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 tested, you guys, you guys know what an optimist I am. So um, <laughs> I, um, I have a group chat with the two lads that I go to the games with, um, and I would change the name of it to um, LUFC relegation season because I'd been, I'd been <laughs> saying that's it. We've had it this season. We've spent no money. No, we, you know, I don't believe this, that from you. We've got this, <laughs> we've got this brilliant coaching, but we, we stuck with these same players and they were shit last year and we're just going to get left behind and it's going to be awful. And then that game happened and I would just, I think I would just stood like slap jawed at the end of it. Like, and I, 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 like, like, I couldn't well, believe not forget, what I'd seen. You know, I think it was, I think, was it Click that scored first? Yes. Bearing in mind what had happened with him and the journey he'd been on. You know, it, 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 to, to all intents oh, yeah, and yeah. purposes, it, it was under contract to the club, but he was never coming back. No, Not until Bielsa done, came in. He was done. No. He'd gone. It wasn't real. Um, what, what we did with, those, with that squad? I mean, even even like little details like, I remember Patrick Bamford being at, uh, at Middlesbrough, thinking, fucking, when we were watching that dross when, when he <laughs> were at Middlesbrough and just thinking, fucking, I'd love to have a player like Patrick Bamford. Oh, he's on fire, he's man. And I just thought, fucking hell, that's an hell of a statement, that. And then Click doing what he did, and, you know. I always remember, I think it was it Rowett that were in charge of Stoke at the time. Or were in charge uh, of Stoke. On it Pulis. Was it Gary Rowett? No, hadn't Rowett just been sacked from some? Would it? No, it was Birmingham. We got sacked from. It might have been Rowett. That, that, that would have I think it might have been. Anyway, I remember that. I remember him doing like a pre pre um, season um, 
kind of conference and stuff. And, and Phillips were representing Leeds. And I'm sure it was Rowett at first Stoke. I could be wrong. Uh, but whoever was manager at Stoke is saying it was obviously our first first game of the season. Now you're going to get on. And it says, oh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll edge him or whatever. And I think it, or whoever it was, it says, oh, they clearly hadn't seen the bookmaker's odds. And they were all having a yeah. bit of a laugh and a giggle and all that sort of stuff. And we absolutely fucking pumped them. And I nearly hit Butland on the head with a paper ball I threw at him as well. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, one of them, we just, oh, so we, <laughs> we've not seen football like that for years. It was just unreal. Like, it, I think the last time we saw football like that was when we were playing in the Champions League. Do you know what I mean? When, when we actually were that good and we were that devastating in attack and just a complete performance. Just and I just the, remember being in the Peacock after and everyone was buzzing. It. Like, if you'd been going to the games before that season, you'll have known that it was just doom and gloom most of the time after the games. People were just fed up. We were just there because it's Leeds and you go, don't you? Because we love That's Leeds. It. Well, you're a, you're you're a cheese wedger, are, are, are you a cheese wedger? Are you a dairy league? I am, yeah, I am. Where were you before we were shit like? Well, <laughs> I were actually in uh, the family we stand we the season shit. before that. Um, but you you're right what you're saying. Thing. You're absolutely right what you're saying. For me, going to watch Leeds... I think I've been a season ticket holder since about 2012. So right through with a fucking shit. Mm. Um, but for me, it was more of a social element, really, rather than going and watching quality football. It was about going to the pub with lads, having a few bevies, going and watching a bit of football, you know, and then and then pissing off home. But Get for away that, from misses that kind of thing. Yeah, just just to go and have a laugh and a crack with lads, watch a bit of footy and, and go home, and then and then when this happened, it was Gary, it was Gary Monk really that started this this new generation of leads off when it Pontus Jans and all that sort of stuff. He brought Pablo in, didn't he? It was, yeah. To be fair, it was. It, but then when the Bielsa first came, season when we life. actually thought what we might do something here. Just unreal football. But anyway. <laughs> and I've checked, it was Gary Rowett. Good job. It was Gary Rowett. I thought it was. And, I knew and you'd have to check it as well. I'm like, he were, he were right. But let, also, lest, lest we forget, we had Sam Usai. He's playing there. That's who that's who said click up. Can you imagine if he'd have been oh, in his age in the Bielsa? He was the one. Sam Usai is. A couple of seasons. He buggered off halfway yeah. through the season. Yeah, January. A couple of seasons under Bielsa, he he had just kept improving. He had he had the talent. He just didn't have the head. Do you remember when he um, had that set two with that Brentford player? I think it was, and he just like went, went straight over his head. And went, like, yeah, he was looking like that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> they were like he had squared up to him. Close, like, <laughs> him and Alioski about chest height, and that he was funny. <laughs> that was funny. So this weekend's match. Uh, Sheffield United, Paul Heckingbottom's Sheffield United. Um, can I have some a bit of chatter about that? What do we think? Are we going to well, beat them? Is, think, are they um, going to get some sort of a bit of a new manager bounce? What's the general feeling? You know, we used to have like the the British managers club, and it used to be just like managers who were shit that kept getting jobs, like Mark Hughes and Tony Pulis as well. I think Paul Heckingbottom's like the next generation of the British managers club. <laughs> um, I, I just he's got no as here. The guy just doesn't do anything for me. I don't understand why he's supposedly highly rated. Do you know what I mean? I, I just I think we'll beat him. I think we'll beat him good. I don't think he'll get anything out of those players because I think he's capable. Quite didn't have a bad record at Barnsley, did they? He didn't. Do you yeah, know what? But you when get we lots brought of him in, have one and, good club. But Barnsley fans were devastated that we managed to poach him. Do, do we I remember that. Him? I remember that. Picked he him did off do like, well with him. like, like the you know a bloke taking a girlfriend off another lad and then just dropping him. He's <laughs> had his way with her. All I remember him for is wearing his "Welcome to Myanmar" t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shocking. They stitched him up there. Did the club? Didn't they? They did. Yeah, we should send him on that right. tour of Myanmar with no intention of keeping him. I mean, that that were harsh. That did he find out while he, still on the tour as well? Probably, probably saw him. But back. they knew. I've heard like on on in you know, other forums and stuff like that that they, they'd already decided in March. I mean, they'd only been there a few, what eight nine weeks. They'd already decided <laughs> in March they won for they won the best, and they they were moving him on and they'd be getting someone else. And it's that's the round about the time they went, you know, Bielsa, pipe dream. And that, that's where it started. But what I mean, what do we think? Were, to, what, what we got? What we got coming to us, lads? What do we think? Yeah, weekend's game. The yeah. Saturday afternoon is it? S- it is. Yeah, Chef uh, United. Yeah. I, I, with it being a derby, they they're always going to find that extra couple of percent from somewhere. But I just think I think it'll be too much for them. I think I mean, when you're they're relegated now, but. 
um, when you're in, in in that sort of position and you've got see see winning becomes a habit, but so does losing, and it's very difficult to get out of. It's really yeah, difficult. Yeah. Um, and I think with the added with the added bonus of them, not math, I don't think the mathematically relegated, but the, the you know they might as well be. Yeah, um, I don't think they're I don't going to don't think they're going to be able to find that find that energy within to to compete with with what Leeds are going to um, bring on Saturday. I can't see. It. You know you're I saying about they're, um, they're not, they're not mathemat- mathematically, I can't say it now, mathematically <laughs> relegated. It's um, not on that, I know, yeah. <laughs> the, one of the players, I, 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 can't, I don't know who it was, but they had one of the players um, the other night speaking on Talk Sport. They'd like had him phone up or something. And they said something to him about, um, so next season, you know, do you think you'll be able to come back up and all that? And they were just like, oh, yeah, I think we'll do all right. And they're like, he'd accepted they were going down and that's one of the players. Do you know what I mean? He didn't say, well, we're not down yet. You know, we're going to keep yeah. fighting till the end. He was like, yeah, yeah, I think we'll do all right. We've got a good squad. And that says a lot to me, that. It does. No, it does. But they've got to admit defeat now, surely. Nothing is going to stop them now. No, but you'd think well, that even at a basic level as a player, you'd be at least playing for your future, thinking, "Well, I don't want to go down." Do you know what I mean? Fans don't want to hear that. Yeah, of course until, you don't. until, you until say it's it, impossible still, to stay up. Yeah, even if you believe it, you well, don't it. say that when you when you're in media and you fa- your own fans are going to be listening to you. Would you no, say that? As a exactly. Fucking hell! No, job's mm-hmm. not done. Yeah, we've still got a chance. It might be a slim yeah. chance, but well, it is a yeah. chance. But you know, if if there was someone degree. playing for Leeds saying, "Oh yeah, we'll 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 come back next year before season finish," they'd get fucked on Twitter. They'd get yeah, out of like fans. Yeah, they would. There'd be a chant yeah. about them two days later. Not <laughs> without the fucking ham-faced wanker himself. They should have they should have kept him for next season. They've made a. I right don't understand play. why he, he, he got Honestly. them out of that league oh. with those players. Why why not keep him? Well, I don't get it. Well, that's another thing. He, another tried, bit. he tried to quit in January. I think it was is what's been said since. Right. And um, they, they managed to persuade him to stay. Because that, that guy, the shake, whoever he is, that has the um, yeah. controlling stake in um, Sheffield United, he, he brings talks up and starts talking to Jim White. <laughs> it's, it's I don't know how you can listen to that shite, to be honest. back to Chile, you know that, didn't he? It? It, yeah, it's, it's because work's that boring, mate, that, you know, just some <laughs> sports on in the background keeps me sane. It's, that's literally all it is. And Simon Jordan's actually um, quite... Like sensible sometimes. I saw, I saw so some of the things. He's quite to He keeps slagging off Danny Mills as well, who they have on another show. And then Simon <laughs> Jones just lays into him all the time and says, No one listens to Danny Mills. That's allowed. <laughs> Danny Mills. <laughs> Coming back to the game then. Yes. Um, so the, the, the last three results for Sheffield United have, have all been defeats. They haven't scored a goal and they conceded nine. Um, 2 0 against Chelsea in FA Cup. He's, you know, it, it, FA Cup, Chelsea knew they were going to beat them. I think they put out a bit of a weekend side, still still walked it, didn't really get out of second gear. Leicester absolutely smashed them 5 0. Um, there's just something back of it. I'm confident that we're going to get a win, but there's something back Don't of my mind that, 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 that just heck, hot. <laughs> I can't, I can't. It. it's ex Leeds. Oh God, what's oh, going to happen? <laughs> and, and it, it, it feels to me like it does like a histon or something where mm. you know that there's just a little fucking chance. <laughs> when you're saying about them last few games, when you're saying about them last few games, I'm thinking in old money, that would be a Leeds defeat. <laughs> That's it. You know, the, there's always a chance in 90 minutes that oh, it can happen. You know that. You know, if, you know what, we, what he's really thinking, depending on his prediction. If he goes for a draw, if he goes for a draw, side, that means that he thinks we're going to get beat, really. But he can't <laughs> bring himself to yeah. say it. <laughs> we might as well move on to uh, predictions then. Yeah, call it up. So, um, uh yeah let's just get it up in front of me now so i can capture where we're going so that's what she said um hey um so si are, are you aware of the prediction league that we've got i think mayors might have mentioned it to you when you first did the interview recording way back when but then he never got in touch with you to find out what your predictions were <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> um, you, so, i can't recall to be honest mate um, so basically, what it is, uh, if you if you get the score prediction absolutely spot on, you get five points. Um, so if you call it three one, you get five points. If you call it four two, and it ends up three one, you get three points because you got the difference right. 
yeah, you yeah. just call it a one nil and it ends up five nil or whatever, then you get one point just for calling the, the result the right way. Um, if you're back against Leeds and Leeds win, you get a minus five. Minus five, right. <laughs> Um, Which so, um, the only the brave dare. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got to start with Smarty then. Where are we going? Do you know what? Do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to take a leaf out of my mate Brolin's fucking book here, and I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to say four nil leads. That's not. That's gonna, not what he does. That's not my score. No, no. I'm, I know yours is four one, but I'm not going to say four one because oh, okay, right. nothing. But I'm going to say four nil. I can't see them scoring. Right. There's no Fair fucking enough. way. And, and I'm assuming that the deviant, deviant is not deviating from 4-1. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And I think this is <laughs> not the, the date is coming in. And I might actually back it this time because I think we're going to smash these famous yeah, predicted. Words. In fact, I think it's been every single game, hasn't it? He started with 4-1 and then just stayed there. Yeah, yeah just said, right, game. I'm yeah. sticking with that. It's going to happen. And it's it um, come once. Did you predict fat... 4-1 against Liverpool for the first game of the season? No, because we weren't Not doing there. prediction leagues at first game of the season, were we? No, we were, were we? I'm about to say that would have been a fucking hell of a, hell of a result. We, no, no we, we, the, the season were already up and running before we started recordings, wasn't it? So we yeah, I can't remember um, why I started with that. I what in Newcastle or West did. Brom? Probably. On a side <laughs> note, I watched that first game with a mate of mine who's a Liverpool fan, and honestly, it's, it's fair to say neither of us had any clue what was coming. This season. <laughs> or, or what had <laughs> happened afterwards. <laughs> what, yeah, the, exactly. what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, so there's, there's another one that we've got, uh, Si. Um, you've met uh, uh, Carl, the Irish fella that's on the on the pod as well. Um, yeah. He, he doesn't play because any time he backs against Leeds to get beat and he doesn't want to back against Leeds in the predictions. <laughs> so he just doesn't play. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he doesn't play. <laughs> so what I do, the, the most prevalent um, prediction he gets so if everybody goes right. for the opposition and Leeds win, he gets a minus five. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so you could play it any way you want, but uh, go on. What 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 do you reckon this score's going to be? I'm going pretty big because I think someone's due a good hiding from us. I'm going us. I like that. Us? Six, six one. Six this is what one. I like to hear. This is what I want to hear. You do call us us a lot, you know, I've noticed. <laughs> Not wrong with that. Because he's Leeds. Six one. Leeds, always Leeds. I'm a little bit Leeds. disappointed that you've gone the one, to be honest. The one. I thought about it. Well, you know, we have got Cooper. Give him some Give him some Do you know what? That that is that is one question. So if Cooper's fit, does he come back in? Yeah, of course he does. Of course he does. Think, I'm not saying it's because he's but... think he has because he's captain. He will do, of course he will. I think I think yeah, he's so. been outstanding this season. I think he's I really do. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Right Come on now, Sai. I I started calling. <laughs> I had a nickname for for Liam Cooper. Um, <laughs> in fact, I had a couple, but we won't we won't obviously go over those because I think since the probably Christmas period, maybe slightly before November time. Um, I think he no, no, it won't because that's when I start slagging him off. So yeah, probably about New Year. <laughs> he's, he's actually he's actually turned up, and I think he's been. He's too hate him. No, he used to do. I don't, I've never hated him. No, start throwing <laughs> shit around like that. I've just never been convinced that he's going to be level. Real him in. But I I have said myself, he has been better recently than he was early in the season. Do you, do you know what? I, I honestly feel like last season. When we was in the champ, I was like, I wasn't convinced at all. I just thought, oh, but he looks for me. He looks totally better in the prem, which is a bit crazy, really. Yeah. So, so I know, for I think me, he's done well this year. For me, I think the first quarter of the season, I think he, he did have some shaky games. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there were times that uh, he'd let the ball run when you know for a fact the way that you're reading it, he ought to be clearing it. And a man had run off him when you'd really expect him to be leading it. Uh, there were a couple of times when Strike just ended up in completely the wrong position. And you're thinking, as the senior centre half, you've got to be bossing him and putting him in the right place. Yeah. After that, I really, do you know, and I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and these two aren't going to agree with me at all. And I still think now he's been our most consistent centre half all season. I really do. I think he's been really good this season. Do I think he's going to be our first choice centre back next season? No. I think that if everybody's fit, it's Laurent Cock. Can't argue with that. That what you've said there. He yeah, has been I, I'm, I'm, because 
the rest of them have been fucking plagued by injuries and doing whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, but to be honest, I I can I can see Cooper coming back in, and if Cock is ready, I can see Cock starting above um, Lorente and Struick as well. Yeah, I can so see you that. think you think it'll be the two two fresh coming if back Cock into the is, side? If Cock is, full, you know, yeah, I mean, I can't see him not being after two weeks of internationals and him being back at home. Um, and he has had minutes in under twenty three, hasn't he? As in Leeds. So yeah, yeah I, I, if if Cock is available and he's ready to go, I can see Cock sliding straight back into the starting eleven with him. <laughs> So, uh, we did that. <laughs> so, uh, just just to capture mine before we move on, um, I am going uh, with a, a clean sheet, and I'm saying three nil. Right. That's... So um, no overwhelmingly, but we've got no draws. We've we've gone no what, six ten. So it, it's seventeen two is the balance of goals. Really, <laughs> just from four of us. So they do a right dick in then. <laughs> we'll obviously catch up with Confident. the rest of the uh, rest of the group's uh, predictions and stuff. Um, you you usually do a tweet, don't you, Mister Gill? Yeah, I'll get them and uh, we'll get some out before the game. We'll get some graphics out and show off what the um, just a reminder of the predictions table because it's been a, a couple of weeks, hasn't it? So we'll get yeah, tells, yeah. we'll get the table out and we'll get what people have predicted. Right then, so obviously, this <laughs> takes us nicely onto the hot topic now. <laughs> For the first time only this season, it's probably a very, 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 very <laughs> tight toss-up between Mr. Heckingbottom and Mr. Hockaday. Now then, I'm going to go straight to Gilly for this one, and I'm going to leave Simon till last. So Just Mr. to get a feel for it. Just so you can kind of get a, yeah. a bit of an idea of what sort of absolute tosh we're going to be spouting over the next five minutes. Gilly, <laughs> so, yeah, if you will take the floor, please. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, you, you, you look at um, you, you look at the record that uh, Heck's got, and we'll go Heck first. We know we know about Hawk. We know what he's all about. We you know he's, we know his cycling proficiency. We know his bronze swimming certificate. That's right. I think from a from a perspective of, of uh, Hecking Bottom, you, you look where he's been. Um, Bradford, Barnsley, Nor- <laughs> Norwich, Sunderland. You know, at 71 was before my time. Uh, thanks, Jay. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was. I'm not sorry. I didn't, didn't say checking. <laughs> He's asking for your birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, um, and Chef Wednesday as well. He was there as well. So, okay. um, but you, you know, you, so you look at his history and. and Sounds like a shit Warnock. Well, you basically, <laughs> yeah. But equally, you know. Heck and Hawk, they're both obviously they're both Leeds legends. Um, so <laughs> to, <laughs> trying trying to uh, trying to pick between them. Do you know it's 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 so super difficult. But you know, w- only one of them. One of them is is a, a a Yorkshire rival. I mean, I don't really consider them a rival, but they're, they're a Yorkshire team, and and you know they're a decent sized club. So one of them is a rival, and the other one actually has the future of football in his hands. That's right, the so future I'm, of our. I'm gonna That's have right. to go Hawk. <laughs> you never Just let me down, Gil. Our youth. <laughs> gonna have to. <laughs> I've got no choice, basically. Just for a bit of context here, Simon, uh, Mr. Hockaday is a PE teacher now. <laughs> Literally. Maybe, it, it might be a bit more of a PE teacher. might be the head Literally. of some sort of sports science not, at some college. Not like Solskjaer. He's basically a uh, fucking... Where, yeah. where did they pick him up from again? Please, can someone remind Forest, me? Uh, uh, Forest Green Station, I think. Forest Green Rovers, <laughs> it was. Yeah, it's Service yeah. Station. Yeah, it was, it was Forest yeah. Green Rovers. Uh, he'd also been at Kidderminster Harriers, don't forget. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> you mustn't forget the Harriers. <laughs> get 20 Jesus metre swimming badge on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no um, actually, that, that would have to lead, wasn't it? It was, it would have to lead. Really? Yeah. Christ. I don't fucking know, Gilly. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck where they were after. It would have a fucking nightmare. <laughs> 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 but also, he is literally is a PT. Is it? Uh, South, 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 South Stroud and Gloucester. Fucking poor bastards. Like South, 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 South Gloucester and Stroud College men's football. Right. Well, Super I'm gonna, Stroud. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet for this one. Um, as I said last time, uh, the the hawk, you know, I have it. I have, I, I've heard that he's read the Green Cross code. And <laughs> because of that, the hawk knows that he give way to the right on a roundabout. I'm not sure that Eckingbottom even knows that. 
So I'm going for the hawk. They don't have roundabouts in Barnsley. <laughs> They're driving straight lines and really fast. That's right. <laughs> in, in all pony <laughs> traps? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Just gone to shit. Really, quickly it? googling a few months ago. Do you know? I have I've Google imaged him because I just I just couldn't picture his face. But I, now you wish you hadn't. Now you wish you hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be diplomatic because I, and uh, look, it, I think the job was way too big for both of them when it presented itself but they would have been silly not to take it. So on that basis, um, with, with <laughs> You're Hockaday, just adding now, aren't you? <laughs> with with Hockaday awesome. being... Lads have thrown me right in the shit here with this. Head of male football at South Gloucestershire and Stroud College, <laughs> and <laughs> Hecky Bottom still being in the pro ranks, I'm going to have to go with Hecky Bottom. Oh, controversial. 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 <laughs> Going Whoa. against the grain. He's a bad one, isn't that, Simon? <laughs> he's not conforming. He's not conforming to the He's a maverick. He just does his own thing. He don't, he don't give a shit, does he? <laughs> I'm telling you, Ekin Bottom, he's not read the green cross code, Simon. I'm telling you. You can't pick him. I'm, I'm very disappointed. He's probably seen some of your car videos. <laughs> might have done, yeah. He might have decided not to go near cars again after seeing some of them. you got Morris Minor. Mm, keeps, his, keeps his fucking PE bags and his cones and his mannequins in there. Probably, probably a two. More joking. Dead bodies, so let's go. <laughs> he was a big yes, of course, not of the podcast. Um, he's, he's a legend. He's, he's so a legend. I, I just, just to come back to what Simon was saying, I, I just, I, yeah, I've got, I've got his career since Leeds in front of me, and I will have you know he joined Swindon Supermarine after being. Oh wow! Was that a boat? <laughs> Who did? Hockaday. Boat manufacturer. Yeah, Hockaday. Swindon Supermarine. Did they call him? Having, having did they call him Captain Hawk? <laughs> <laughs> um, he then went. He went. He then went to Coventry City, not as first team coach, just professional development coach for the for the. Uh, uh, for the under twenty, myself. And and then, <sighs> kid him in the Harriers. You know, the, this guy's he, he stayed in the game, and he's You're now a PE teacher. Legend, but you know what I mean? <laughs> By default, <laughs> legend, man. that's scary. That you know, <laughs> Captain <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> oh man! What who did he have? It was it was who was chairman? Julia. <laughs> did he never hear the story? Sound so? mind. Sound Somebody mind. else is going to bring him in. <laughs> I mean, who the fucking hell in the right mind to bring that fucking idiot in? Let's be honest. He sat Absolutely. down with Cholino in a cafe or something, and he deer in um, the headlights. He told he Cholino so like shit. he told Cholino how he, how he wants to play the game, and he used salt and pepper shakers to demonstrate <laughs> to him on the table. And Cholino, no salt and pepper shakers it. are safe around. <laughs> sold. <laughs> sold. He, he was all away by it. <laughs> now, I do recall it. I, I do recall. I mean, I've got it in front of me, so I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm remembering this, but I do recall the story coming about that it was really hard done to. And I, I thought that the the wage was something like forty grand a year. And don't get me wrong, you know that's that's still a it's a uh, healthy one. wage. You know, it I wasn't. It was more than that. I've got it in front of me. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah it was a lot more than that. It was. It was just over double that. Um, but before him, um, Brian McDermott were on seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds a year. <laughs> this was ninety thousand. The, the, the expectation. What fucking salt and pepper shakers? <laughs> well, I mean, are expensive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the expectation. It's all like canteen. They're having a re- restock. Especially if you get them really big ones. Yeah, <laughs> like a fucking chair leg. <laughs> Some chair leg pepper fucking grinders. Jesus Christ, they're expensive then. But my favorite, Rest favorite, beer, favorite, beer favorite story. Like trick one. My favourite story about this guy is um, they um, they went over to Italy for a pre-season training camp and they played against an actual amateur side. Uh, and after the 16th goal was scored, Silvestri went on their team. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As, as, with as far as interesting stats go, that's, uh, yeah. Right, right 16th up there, goal that. went in. Yeah. Fucking hell, Sly. Right. Oh, no, I haven't been... Octopic, yeah, top guy. 
<laughs> salt pepper shaker, <laughs> fucking extraordinaire, 10 meter swimming badge. Thought we were going to take us to the Champions League. Absolute fucking legend. Fuck right off. <laughs> Uh, hecking bottom, you fucking Barnsley shitbag. No, no offense to anyone from Barnsley, but, but if you spot but, Barnsley, but fuck off, can... Barnsley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you're from Barnsley, fuck right off. Um, so yeah, the hawk. unless you're a Leeds fan. Well, well yeah, obviously, if you're a Leeds fan, then you've clearly got your head fucking screwed on, aren't you? At least the hawk had ambition, eh? What did, what, like did the, what did the heck have? There, there, there were a bit that I wrote. Um... Uh, at the weekend, um, there's a there's a uh, the hex blog came to us and asked us to write a piece, and it was about um, hot shop, um, and and uh, so I, I did write a bit of a piece, and and um, him and Eddie Gray had been interviewed as part of a, a piece, and it's just going back to what I was saying about um, the preseason friendly and stuff uh, about the sixteen nil and then swapping players around and things like that. Is I I don't know if you if if you remember, but the uh, the famous game against Southampton. Um, when it was 7 0, and I think there were 39 you were there, passes, you? yeah. Oh, it was great. Uh, I think there were there were 39 passes, um, and you know, there were there were Rabonas. I mean, it's 60s and 70s. How often did you see Rabonas? Uh, but but so, there were Rabonas yeah. and back heels and um, switching of play, uh, left to right, and and you know, they, they just looked completely imperious. And it actually, show, the show story... in six and seven is if you did a Rabona, somebody would just try and two foot you next, like, minute that you <laughs> get not, not if you were Leeds. <laughs> you going to come two foot you if you lead. But, if um, Kevin, Kevin Keegan and you did that, you'd been snapped in too. <laughs> but um, we, we were in a position where, you know, they weren't getting anywhere, anywhere near the... Well, they, they, actually, they were 7-0 down because it would be for this. But um, actually, Revy pulled somebody to one side and said, look, Everton have already beaten these 8-0. Um, and I think um, what Gray was saying is he thinks that um, he'd already encountered the Southampton gaffer in his career before and he didn't want to embarrass him anymore. So he said... He knew him, didn't he, or something? Yeah, he said, just, just don't score any more goals, just just keep possession. And that's <laughs> when... Rest, lads. That, that, that's, <laughs> but that's when that bit of passage of play starts and that's the bit that everybody remembers is we're already 7-0 up and now we're taking the piss and it was it wasn't about taking the piss, it was actually about trying not to embarrass them, but that's the bit that everybody yeah. remembers. <laughs> well, I love stories like passes. that. It's just, I, yeah, I, I like stories like that. It brings a bit yeah, of um, character to the game, doesn't it? I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've probably one of the that. most most um parts of you know when you look back at history of Leeds and all that sort of stuff, the videos that there is that and maybe uh, Eddie Gray's uh, drag backs against Burnley and all that sort of stuff. Those those are the ones I specifically remember from from the golden ages, but Right, guys, uh, please don't forget to like our videos and scrub, subscribe to our channels. Dip, 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 dip. Um, dip, dip, dip. Subscribe to our channels. Uh, that's going to be it for us. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time, folks. See ya. See you later. This podcast episode brought to you by Auto Know Better features hosts Marty, OKB regulars Gilly and Jay, and formerly to play Simon Johnson. Thanks to Emily Render for artwork for the show, and Jen Jamming Sachs for providing the music. Thanks for listening.